Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, week six of USM Lee Domination High Yield Tutorials. This is going to be a great, super high yield uh, topic. Uh, before we begin, please subscribe to the channel, share this with all your friends and colleagues, let this free knowledge go viral so everyone can benefit and ace this exam and place in the 99th percentile on the USM Lee. So before I'm going to start something new. Before we begin, let's start with a question. We'll come back to this question at the very end. So which of the following fractures is not seen commonly in non-accidental trauma? So in child abuse, which is not seen? Is it anterior rib fractures, posterior rib fractures, metaphyseal corner fractures, sternal fractures, scapula fractures, or spinous process fractures? Which fracture is not typically seen uh, in the setting of non-accidental trauma or child abuse? So child abuse is gonna be the topic that we're gonna talk about today. It's a very, very high yield topic on the USMLE. I'd be shocked if you guys don't receive at least one question on non-national trauma on every step, step one, step two, and step three. It's literally that important. Uh, the common, it'll usually present in an infant. Uh, most, most patients are infants when they present for child abuse. Uh, it'll almost never present anyone that's older than six years old. So it'll always be someone that's usually less than six years old, but typically an infant. And really what you're looking for is when you have a discordance between the history that's provided by the parent and the injuries that are seen on imaging studies. That's essentially the, you know, how child abuse is gonna present. They may also be fussy, irritable, uh, failure to thrive is another common way that they present. They may have like cigar or cigarette burns on their skin. They may not be attentive. Uh, those are all classic ways that patients with child abuse are gonna present to you in the question stem. And a very important finding that we see, you know, from the shaking baby syndrome is, is subdural hemorrhage uh, in the brain. So this is classically how we're, they're gonna show it to you. Uh, again, if you remember from my video during week two, subdural hematoma is this, you know, bright crescenteric fluid collection with a concave border along the convexities. Here you see it here along the frontal convexity. You also see it along the left frontal convexity. And you also see it layering along the falx, the falx cerebri, which is also in the subdural space. So again, this is a non-contrast CT image of the brain. And you're looking for bright fluid, extra axial fluid that's you know crescenteric shaped um, with a concave margin along the convexities. Okay, subdural hematoma in 80, 90% of patients that are positive with child abuse, you're gonna have subdural hemorrhage. You may also have subarachnoid hemorrhage, you know, maybe 50% of patients, but you know, they're likely gonna show you a case of subdural hemorrhage. You may also have like a calvarial fracture or a skull base fracture from direct blow or direct impact, okay? From an ophthalmological standpoint, what you may see is also retinal hemorrhage. In fact, 75% of patients with child abuse will have retinal hemorrhage. And this is an axial T2 weight image through the brain. And I want to focus here on the globes here. This is the globe. This is the pupil right here. And all this area here should be nice and bright, T2 bright and white as it is here. But you start to have this dark signal here posteriorly. This is anterior. This is posterior along the globe. And this dark signal here represents retinal hemorrhage. When you start to see dark signal in a space that should be totally bright, that is an example of what retinal hemorrhage would look like. They may also show you a photomicrograph of the eye, right, where there's, you know, a lot of red in the white sclera, okay? Um, that's another way they can show you retinal hemorrhage. But again, this is a very common ophthalmologic uh, manifestation of non-accidental trauma. In terms of the musculoskeletal system, what you're looking for are fractures and different types of fractures. And, you know, this is a, a frontal view of the right knee here. I want to show you that, you know, the growth plates are obviously open, so the growth plates aren't fused. This is the epiphysis. This is the metaphysis, and we have an unfused growth plate. We have the same thing here along the tibia, the epiphysis, the metaphysis, and an unfused growth plate. A key finding that's actually pathognomonic for child abuse, you heard it right, pathognomonic, which for some reason is not taught well in medical schools, is this concept of metaphyseal corner fractures. It's probably the only finding, imaging finding, that is pathognomonic for child abuse. And it happens because of the tensile and torsional forces that occur from twisting, or the rapid acceleration and deceleration that happens from shaking. That's the mechanism. And you get these fractures along the corner of the metaphysis. If you take a look here, there's a lot of irregularity here along the corner of the metaphysis here. And this is an example of what a metaphysical corner fracture will look like. I think it's better seen on this lateral view where you can see a fleck of bone posteriorly adjacent to the metaphysis, because this is the physis, this is the epiphysis, and you have a fleck of bone here. This is known as when you see a small, you know, triangular fragment of bone adjacent to the corner of a metaphysis, that's a metaphyseal corner fracture. That's child abuse, no questions asked. It's pathognomonic for child abuse. 
It's that important. And I want everyone to understand that. That's what they're likely going to show you on the MSK section when they're dealing with child abuse. Another common a manifestation is when you have fractures at different stages of healing. So you may have an acute fracture, a subacute fracture, a chronic fracture, multiple fractures. And you can see here in the ribs, notice that you have a fracture here where there's a lucency. And then there's also some cortical thickening and callus. So this indicates that there's a subacute fracture here because you can still see the lucency, the lucent fracture line, but there's new bone formation around the rib indicating that it's a subacute fracture. But right under it, you have a chronic healed fracture because you have you know, cortical thickening and callus but we don't see the loosened fracture line. So you have a chronic fracture here and you have a subacute fracture here. Those constellation of findings suggest that this is really a, uh, this is a non-essential trauma patient or a patient with child abuse because you have different fractures at different stages of healing. Okay, so that's another very important high yield way they can show you child abuse on the USMLE. So the USMLE must know take home points are the following. So, you know, you're going to get this on the exam. I can almost guarantee you, you're looking for a discordance between the history and the injuries that are seen. They may say, oh, the page, the baby fell off out of the crib, but then you see all these fractures. You see a metaphyseal corner fracture. You see fractures in different stages of healing. You have a subdural bleed. That's non-essential trauma. From a neurological manifestation, you're going to looking for subdural hemorrhages, maybe skull base fractures, calvarial fractures. In ophthalmology, you're looking for those retinal hemorrhages that I showed you. And in the musculoskeletal system, you're looking for those pathic mnemonic metaphyseal corner fractures and fractures that are at different stages of healing. So we come back to the question that I showed you at the beginning. So which of the following is not seen commonly in non trauma? It's actually anterior rib fractures. They can happen when patients or babies fall down the stairs, you know, but posterior rib fractures, metaphyseal corner fractures, and then the three S's, the sternal, scapular, and spinous process fractures. Although you know, the three S's can occur in an adult, they're much less common in a child. So when you start to see that in a child, your eyebrow should raise, obviously. And metaphyseal corner fractures are for sure pathing mnemonic for child abuse. So if you see that at all, there's no questions asked. It's non asthma trauma. And you should obviously have to call Child Protective Services and let, you know, your local authorities know that this is a case of non accidental trauma. Very important. And I want to do a bonus case um, that's kind of related. So this is a child that comes in with blue sclera, um, and presents with the following radiograph. The finding that you're seeing here is a result of what pathology? Is it non-accidental trauma, a defect in collagen type one, growth plate disturbance, or a lack of vitamin C? And if we take a look here at this, at this, at this baby, we're noticing here, first of all, that they have osteopenia and the bones are very demineralized, right? So there's, you know, they're not as bright or as dense as we'd expect the bones to be. And then there's a bowing deformity here along the left femur and along the right femur, there's like a healing fracture here, right? There's some callus, osseous irregularity here. So it looks like they have like a healing fracture. They have a bone deformity and there's osteopenia. So, you know, is this non accidental trauma? Probably not because we have a lot of bone deformities here. There's osteopenia, the mineralization of the bone is decreased. So that suggests that there may be an underlying skeletal dysplasia here and not necessarily um, non accidental trauma. This in fact is a case of osteogenesis imperfecta, which is in the differential for non accidental trauma. And sometimes it can be confused with non accidental trauma. And of course, that is a result of defect in the synthesis of collagen type one. So that's the answer here. And the way to know it is, is that first of all, look for bowing deformities and look for osteopenia and demineralized bone. That's the key. When you start to see demineralized bone, osteopenia, you can have multiple fractures, but there's a lot of bowing deformity, there's osteopenia. And the key giveaway here is also the blue sclera. Blue sclera on you know the USMLE is, an example of that, that that should right away cue into osteogenesis imperfecta. In fact, when I took the USMLE, they had an image of an eye that showed blue sclera and they said, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? And of course the answer was osteogenesis imperfecta. That was literally on my exam on the USMLE step one, not even on step two, on step one. That was a step one question for me. So hope this was helpful. Please share this, let this free knowledge go viral and I'll see you next week with another high yield topic. Thank you so much for your attention.